I'm Pete Zielinski with Additive Manufacturing Magazine, and I am here with Dr. Tim Simpson, co-director of the Center for Innovative Materials Processing through Direct Digital Deposition at Penn State University. Uh, Tim, have a metal additive part here, um, 3D printed part. Uh, what's the material? Uh, titanium. All right, titanium part. And we'll talk about kind of the straightforward question of build orientation, which in a lot of ways isn't so straightforward at all. Uh, this part was built oriented like this. Took a lot of build time and the time was just part of the waste. So talk about that. Correct. So this was actually a upright for the Formula race car team uh, here at Penn State. Vincent Morano was working with my colleague Todd Palmer to design and optimize this. Uh, they had used topology optimization to create this very lightweight structure and uh, EOS was printing up for us at the time and decided to orient it in this direction. One of the challenges with this now is you've got overhanging and support uh, surfaces here that need support structures. So in the end, printing it vertically like this took 54 hours to build, uh, of which about 30 hours of that was to create the supports. Uh, and it was about $2,000 in powder. So $1,500 was in the support structure. So over half of your build times and three quarters of your costs end up being scrap that get removed uh, from the actual part itself. All right. So. Uh a solution, build it this way, orient it this way. It's not as high up off of the build platform, so fewer layers ultimately to define the form, less time. Why not do it this way? Absolutely. So in most cases, you're absolutely right. Sort of the build height determines how long it takes and of course how much material it takes. This was done in a powder bed fusion system, so that's a lot of titanium. So naturally, you would want to lay it flat in this orientation, uh, minimum, minimum height uh, as well as minimum build time. But then you now start to get these geometries underneath here that are going to need support structures. And it's going to be difficult, if not impossible, to be able to get in there uh, and remove the support material to create that lightweight structure. So you spend all this time optimizing your design, you're going to print it out, and then you've got uh, extra material in there that you can't remove that's just going to increase the weight again. So in this case, it didn't make sense to lay it down flat given this geometry that we were trying to create. So you took it farther than this. What's the solution that did allow this orientation? So as part of that, if you think about it, most of the topology optimization software out there now, essentially the computer program or algorithms that are helping you optimize these lightweight structures, they're not aware, they're not thinking about overhangs and support and build orientation. A lot of people are working on that, but it's not available yet. So we actually had a uh, graduate student of mine that picked this up uh, and continued uh, the project, uh, combining different optimization algorithms as well as build planning software to identify, hey, can we sort of lightweight some of these over, if we're gonna print it in this orientation, how do we change some of this geometry and change some of the structure so that it still maintains the structural integrity as needed, but doesn't require as much support structures when it's being built. And so this is actually the end result there. Uh, and so what we've done is actually eliminated sort of the, uh, the caps, if you will, that are over that particular part. They don't need to be uh, solid like that. We can lightweight it and then uh, remove some material, but then we add some stiffening ribs in here to be able to do that. Very small support structures now that would be easy to go in pop out or move out as part of that. Uh, we're able to also underneath here change this geometry a little bit to make it slightly lighter weight. So we're able to now sort of as we design for additive manufacturing, thinking not only about the geometry, but also how are you gonna build that and the interaction between those two to try and create a lightweight structure that also doesn't need as much support structures as the parts being built. Design for additive manufacturing. So we hear that phrase. Uh, your university has a degree program in additive manufacturing and design. Design for additive manufacturing, we think about things like uh, organic forms and topology optimization and lattice structures for weight savings. But another crucial aspect of design when it comes to additive is support structures. How much of additive design involves thinking about the support of your part while it's growing? Absolutely. So I think when we're talking about design for additive, it's as much about designing the part as it is to think about or designing the build itself. And so it's really those two decisions are very, very tightly coupled now. And I think that's one of the challenges with design for additive manufacturing is we're having to make these new trade-offs that we're not used to making. or We don't have the, really the software tools combined to yet, together yet to help us make those trade-offs. So for instance, as we said, thinking about 
What is my build orientation as I'm creating my structure that then is going to dictate supports, uh, where I might need supports, thin wall structures, maybe thick sections. So all of those are important when we're starting to do the build planning and we need to design and make decisions there just like we do in the geometry uh, of the file itself. Mm -hmm.